welcome back to another video here on the Latin Proud YouTube channel. So we are heading off to check and verify the estimate that the insurance company gave us for my wife's truck. I'm gonna go through some of this with you guys and um, I'm gonna show you actually, actually before I talk about the estimate, before, so that maybe it'll make more sense, I'm gonna try to show you the new dings and dents that were put on the truck after the hailstorm that we got with the tornado that came through. Uh, we actually just had an adjuster out here the other day as well to look over the whole house and barns and stuff like that to see if he can find stuff that was caused by strong winds, hail, stuff like that from the tornado, um, just looking over everything. But the truck did get some minor hail damage and I can show you things that for a fact were not on the truck before the hailstorm that came through. And there are a couple of dings and scratches and stuff that, that were already there that I already know and I did not try to report on insurance. I only reported the things that I knew or knew hail dings or dents or from a tree branch hitting the side of the door and stuff like that that were not previously on the truck. Okay, so I'm not like looking for scratches and dings that I know for a fact are already there. Just stuff that is new and stood out to me. So let's show you around it and then I'm gonna go over the estimate and then we're actually gonna be going to a local paint and body shop and getting them to look it over and give us their estimate as well. So starting on the passenger's rear door, well, driver's passenger door, there's a new hail dent there. There's actually two right there. Then if you go down here, there was a couple, there's a couple in the fender, just two or three there. And if you look at the hood, they're very hard to see on this gray paint color, but there are a few like there, 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 there. There's a few on there. Like I'm not worried about stuff that obviously is not due to that, like a clear coat peel, stuff like that. Getting on top of the truck. I don't know if you can see, but if you get on the cab, it's one of those things, it's so hard to see in photos, but like there are little like quarter size dents and little dime size dings and dents all over the top of the cab. And again, there's little stuff like this, like th that was already there. I already know that was there. I did not try to file pictures and say that those are new dings. But, like this was not there, this was not there. Um, there was like a small ding put in the door there from like a tree branch that hit the side of the truck. Again, you can kind of see they're very faint and it can be kind of hard to see them, but there are new little hail dents on the top of the cab. There's another couple of bigger ones there and there. You can see like the reflection. There's a couple right along in there too. But um, it'd be something that'd be a whole lot easier to see for a body shop that puts something over it so you can tell what's smooth and what's not. Essentially, there's small, very, very faint hail damage on the hood, driver fender, top of the cab, driver door, passenger door, bedside, driver side, bedside. And so it's like a total of like five to seven places on the vehicle that have small hail damage. So do I think it's gonna be something that's hard to fix? No, I don't think a very, very high-end, well-known pink body shop around here that knows what they're doing. I don't think it's gonna be that big of a deal, but I don't know for sure because I've never had somebody replace or fix um, stuff that was hail damaged. And I think this, for the most part, could something would be something that'd be a fairly easy fix for somebody like that, that knows what they're doing. I don't know if this is accurate or not, but my insurance company that I have um, for this truck said that it would be only $125 per panel to fix everything on the truck. So they're saying 125 bucks would fix the hood, top of the cab, driver side fender, you know, the dings on the doors, the bedside, stuff like that. And that it would be totally good for less, I think less than $800 is what they said. And that might be completely accurate, but we are gonna go to a paint and body shop that's very reputable in town here that they do all kinds of paint and body work and repair and automotive stuff and insurance work so we're just gonna run it by them just see what they have to say about it and see if this quote that they said they would reimburse us for to get fixed let's just see see how it matches up I do know that the adjuster that was out here looking at the house different insurance company but he's like sometimes with those auto insurance companies like depending on the company and depending on how long you've been with them 
they'll basically try to wait under quote it, hoping that you're not gonna wanna get it fixed because the deductible will be too close to the actual amount of repair that you'd rather just not even file a claim and you'd just rather pay out of pocket or just not get it fixed at all. So he's like, sometimes that's what they'll do because he's like, they just don't wanna have to deal with it. And they're hoping you don't wanna take the hassle time out of your day to deal with it for a small enough amount. But he's like, I've had to deal with those before. And he's like, I cannot stand companies like that. And he's an insurance adjuster. So, you know, maybe he knows what he's talking about. Anyways, let's go get it checked out just to see what they say. And from there. And I did call ahead. They did not answer, but they did have a voicemail that said, feel free to come in for estimates. No scheduling is needed for a free estimate. I don't know if that counts for insurance estimates. Maybe they need more time, but they didn't answer the phone. Uh, and so I'm just gonna assume that maybe they were busy with somebody else or with another job and they just were not able to pick up. But this place is pretty close. So I'm just gonna drive on by here, see what they have to say. And I just wanna know, I just wanna know from a reputable shop, which I did call two other places in town that were not auto shops, like auto paint body shops. They were just automotive shops that do repairs. And I just asked them, who's the best in town for paint and body repair? or automotive repair needs for, you know, hail damage, stuff like that. And both of them instantly said, this location is the best to go to. So I'm not hesitating to look around for anybody else. I'm just gonna go straight here because they're the most reputable in the area, it sounds like, and see what they have to say. And no, I'm not just trying to make a big deal out of something and be petty about something that shouldn't be a problem. If this was like, an old beater truck and we just use this farm truck and I didn't really care about it that'd be something totally different but since it's my wife's truck and she likes to keep her stuff nice I just think you know if it's worth getting looked into to get repaired I wouldn't mind doing that just because whenever she does go to sell it you never know who's gonna be picky about stuff or if they're gonna be like well it's got hail dings and so we're not gonna pay you what you're asking I mean, you just don't know you really don't know and you know if I'm gonna have to deal with insurance on it and they're gonna give me a price, I'd rather just before anything officially goes down, I'd rather take it with the papers that they sent me on what they think it's gonna cost and what all needs repaired. And I'm gonna have this shop look at it, get a second opinion and submit it to them just in case the numbers don't match up and we're supposed to be getting compensated a little bit more for it. And like I said, for anybody that didn't watch the previous videos, we've never filed for insurance claims on anything before. Never for accidents, never for wind damage, hail damage, tornado damage, fire, nothing. We've never ever filed for anything on homes or vehicles. Um, but the thing that came through, the tornado that came through, it did tear up a lot of stuff around our house. I'm like, okay, this would be noting because there could be like twenty, thirty thousand dollars worth of damage. And you know, either I have to pay that out of pocket if I don't report this when we go to sell our house at some point because it's gonna be an eyesore with all the things that need fixed, or it doesn't get fixed because I don't report it and then it depreciates the value of our home a little bit because, you know, there could be somebody that looks at the house and they go, I don't like all the small hail holes all over the freaking siding on the house or the gutters sagging or who knows what. So all that being said, I just thought, you know what, it was enough of a problem, we need to report it. And with the truck as well, it's like, you know what, you know, all the other trucks are parked indoors in the car, so I'm not worried about those, but the one that did get dinged up, it could be worth looking into in case it needs to be getting fixed. That way, you know, it's in at least as good of condition that it was when we purchased the truck just a few months back. So we got back from doing that, and since I didn't really have much to share with you on that whole insurance and quote thing, I, that's what I thought I was gonna be able to talk about. It's been about a year now since I fluid filmed the underside of this truck, so I got a diesel oil mix there, and I thought, you know what, since I might drive it around on the roads, I know it's not going into winter, it's in the middle of the summer, but I have not filled the rockers, doors and stuff, and fenders with oil in about a year. It can't really hurt to do a reapplication. It's just oil and fluid. So, you know, as long as you put it on, let it drip. In this case, I'm pretty far from the house and it's just gonna be staying over this gravel area since it's gonna kill the grass wherever the oil drips anyways. Perfect opportunity and perfect place. So we're gonna get to fluid film in this. I'm just gonna coat the frame everywhere I can, fill the backs of the rockers, cab corners, bed fenders, get up underneath this liner up on the backside and spray all that so that in the lip on the back of that fender, it can hold a little bit of oil residue there and keep that from rusting out. And then if you see the underside here, 
The frame on this truck is very, very clean, but of course, a reapplication of oil is just hopefully going to help maintain that and um, keep from any kind of scaling like that from starting. Because that's about the worst of it right there. And uh, it's really not that bad for a 22 year old pickup truck. So let's get to coating it up. We got all that Canadian fire smoke fog coming on down here. But we got this thing all oiled down. I did uh, pop the hood actually, and I coated the frame in the engine bay without getting it on the engine. Um, coil buckets, upper and lower control arms, rockers on the inside. I pulled the plugs, filled the rockers front to back, and I just coated the outside with a light layer there. And then, of course, I'm just going to let the truck sit here and drip. And then before I take it anywhere, I'm probably going to, you know, take a bucket of soapy water and just wipe that all off. Filled up behind the bed fenders on both sides, filled the bedside panels and sprayed it all. All so it ran down the side of the bed on the back side there. Sprayed the whole back side of the bumper so that it holds a little bit of oil. Um, I also did obviously same thing on this side, filled all the doors, and then with the doors, I pulled these plugs down here and I stuck the nozzle, it's like a two and a half foot nozzle. I stuck it all the way down and I coated the whole inside of the door back and forth for a little while and uh filled and coated the whole underside of the door, sprayed it all over up underneath there. And same thing with the door, filled the back doors with oil and residue. And it's uh it's messy, but it works. Like it looks like it looks like a absolute mess right now, but I'm telling you what, you give this stuff a week and you look at it, all it's gonna do is make this frame look brand new. It literally will look it'll legit look like a brand new truck frame off the lot and it'll look shiny and clean and it's not gonna look so nasty and it'll be beautiful. I got the little ATV set up with the sprayer with the not so safe chemicals in there. Definitely wear eye protection, mask, gloves, handling that stuff and don't breathe it in or get it in your face or anywhere else. But guys, if you wanna to enter to win this beautiful 1997 F250 7.3 Power Stroke with a ZF5 manual transmission that comes with $5,000 in cash, look at this beauty. Look at this beauty. This truck could be yours. Thing is gorgeous, perfect original condition. Almost perfect original condition. I'm sure somebody could find something on it to complain about, but this thing is gorgeous. If you want to get entered to win it, lmpgear.com. Link is in the description below, or you can type it out and try to look it up that way. But I do recommend you hit the link in the description just to make sure you don't get, you know, onto a site that is not ours. So hit the link, place an order. 30 times entries for launch week are the highest entries of the entire giveaway, and it ends on Sunday, July 2nd at 11.59 p.m. Get entered today. Thanks so much for watching. Remember, with that oil stuff on your truck, do it at your own discretion. Make sure you do it in a safe place. Do it or don't do it. That's on you. I mean, I do it because then my trucks don't rust out. If I'm gonna plan on keeping them for a long time, I like to make sure to keep up with that stuff. You know, you can just use the oil that comes out of the truck, coat it and use the oil for something else to help keep that thing lasting a whole lot longer without all the rust all over it because that will help with your resale value and just simply keeping them in good shape if you're planning on keeping them for a long time. It's free preventative maintenance to keep that thing from rusting to pieces over the years. So anyways, guys, thanks so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Hit the like, subscribe, comment down below, and I'll catch you in the next video. Peace.